the presentation now. All right, so what is dual enrollment? Dual enrollment, it's a way for you to take college classes while you're in high school. So you're hopefully going to finish college faster. Every class that you would take here, we're hoping that you don't have to take again when you come to Chesapeake or when you go to a four-year school. And you're also able to get a head start on your career. You know what you want to major in. We can help you work backwards to make sure you're taking those classes that you need. Now, a lot of students in high school, they have no idea what they want to do after graduation. That is completely normal, especially the sophomores right now. They're going to be rising juniors. I have a sophomore at Queen Anne's high school and he's talked about three or four different things that he wants to do. It's just, it's hard to narrow it down. So this is the time that you can really explore different areas, take different classes that you may not normally take in high school to see if you're interested in it. For instance, maybe you were never in the theater program at high school, but once you take a theater class with Dr. Thompson at Chesapeake, you absolutely love it. It'll just kind of let you decide what kind of things you are interested in. There's also ways that you can earn a transfer basic certificate, an advanced certificate. What this is, is a certain number of credits and it will show up on your college transcript. And it looks great when you're transferring to four-year schools. We've also had students in several counties that they're able to get their entire associate's degree, their two-year degree before they graduate high school, which is amazing. I mean, they've got to start, you would start junior year, the fall of your junior year, you would take winter session, summer session, but it is possible. We had every year, we have more students that actually get an entire two-year degree before graduation. So it's a possibility, but even if you could just take anywhere from 13 to 30 credits, I mean, that could be a year's worth of work that you're not going to have to do again. So that is the types of things that we want you to think about for dual enrollment. Now, who can take it? We're hoping everyone here at this session, you have to be a junior or a senior, and you need a 2.5 GPA in order to take most of our courses. These general education and your career pathway courses, you need a 2.5 GPA. Now, a lot of times students choose to take English and math and some science classes with us. And if that's the case, you do need a 3.0 GPA to take English classes and you need a 3.0 and a grade of C or better to take algebra, I'm sorry, C or better in algebra two in order to take our college math classes. But that's definitely a great option, especially if you're gonna be a senior because you have some more flexibility in your schedule. So that would be a great thing to think about and Tammy and I would be able to help you. And we can talk about that a little bit more um, a few slides into the presentation. So what colleges accept credit, the dual enrollment credits? Like I said, we're hoping you're going to come to Chesapeake before you, um, after graduation, and you can get your associates and then transfer that entire degree to a four-year school. But if you're looking to just take some dual enrollment classes and then go directly to a four-year school, you absolutely can do that. All Maryland state schools will accept our credits, like Towson, Salisbury, College Park, and then several, many private and out-of-state schools will accept it. You really just wanna check with the advisors at each of the schools to make sure you let them know that you're taking dual enrollment and so that they can um, guide you and exactly which are the best classes to take. So everything would transfer. What's important to remember is that as soon as you know what you wanna major in, the better. Because we want all the classes that you're taking at Chesapeake to go towards your major requirements, not just electives. So as soon as you know what you want to major in, let Tammy and myself know, and we can help you work backwards um, in order to figure out the ideal classes to take. Now, like I said, another great resource, every four-year school has transfer advisors, and they also have all of their programs listed online with specific classes that you need to take. So even if you're not sure exactly where you want to go, but you know what you want to major in, you can start doing research on those universities now and pull up those programs to see what classes you need. But the good thing about dual enrollment is that we really encourage you to take, they're called general education classes. You need them no matter where you go or what you do. So those are the classes that we focus on during dual enrollment. All right, how much does it cost? So 
with the, it is a college class and you will have to pay for the class. It all just depends on, we have a lot of different situations in terms of how much you'll have to pay. So for dual enrollment students, you do receive a discount and then the Board of Ed pays an additional 10% for your first four classes. So each three credit online course, which this spring we had everything online, we're still not quite sure about the fall schedule yet. Hopefully we're gonna have more face-to-face -face classes. But one three credit class, which is your typical communications, English, it's gonna be about $444. Now, if you receive free and reduced meals, you only have to pay the cost of the fees, which is approximately $130. So make sure there's a form that you're gonna to have to submit to Tammy and myself. Make sure you check if you do receive free and reduced meals because it's a drastic difference in cost. Now you're thinking 444, that's a lot of money. And it is, it all adds up. But if you would take that exact same class, I don't know if my sophomore parents have started doing research on schools yet. Hopefully my junior parents have. It's expensive. We we're talking about an English 101 class at Chesapeake. That would be the 444 as a dual enrollment student. If you would take it at a four-year school like Salisbury, it would be about $1,000 for the exact same class. So every class you can get done now while you're in high school is the best bet. Yeah. Now, how do I pay? So for your fall classes, payment is going to be due July 12th. Now, what's great about Caroline County is that you have the whole grant. There is money available for you to take college classes. Now, you do need to have a 2.75 GPA and that is to make sure that you have that in high school in order to be eligible for the whole grant. And it is based on how many people in your family, um, how much income your family makes, but there's lots of money available. So we really encourage every Caroline County student, if you have the 2.75 GPA, you should really apply for the whole grant to see if you're um, eligible for that money, even if it could cover some of your books. Some students do get the entire class covered. It's just, we never know, but there's the whole grant that is not available in any other county. So you're very fortunate. I wish we had it in Queen Anne's County, but we do not. So you're very unfortunate to have the whole grant in Caroline County. So that's another form that you're gonna submit to Tammy and myself when you register for classes. We also recommend once you register, you just automatically set up a payment plan. You can do that online. So then you're only, you're not putting as much money down and you don't have as much money to pay in the beginning. So we recommend setting up the payment plan. And then if you find out that you're gonna get the grant, then you're able to adjust your payment plan so the grant could take care of that. Hopefully that makes sense with the finances, but definitely turn in. There's a grant form that we are gonna to send to you we're gonna actually send out this presentation. That's why we're asking for your email. And we're gonna send this to your counselors and they're gonna send it out to everyone also. You're gonna have this PowerPoint and then you will also have the dual enrollment certification form that needs to be co completed and the grant form. Okay, now there's ways in Caroline County that you can earn what's called dual credit. And you can actually do this in the other counties too because I know we had a few people um, in I think Talbot County that's here. So how to earn dual credit. That means that you're taking a class at Chesapeake, but you're also checking the box for a requirement in high school. So for instance, if you take our English 102 class, that gives you credit for your senior year English. So you could take, as a junior, you could take our English, take your, this is kind of what my son's doing in Queen Anne's next year. He's taking his jun th junior year English in the fall at the high school. And then in the spring, in January, he's going to take English 101 with us. And then in the fall of his senior year, he's going to take English 102 with us. And he would not have to take a um, class, the senior year class at the high school. Hopefully that makes, credit, makes sense. So you'll be getting credit for your senior year English. And you're also going to earn two college English credits. And possibly it would just be one if you're only taking 102. If you've taken an AP Lang and you get the appropriate score, then you would only need to take English 102 with us. But that means most colleges, depends on your major, sometimes you only need two English classes. So you could have that completed before you even graduate high school. Same way, especially for my seniors, my rising seniors, so my juniors now. If you take a credit math with us, 
you could take college algebra, statistics, foundations of math, that would give you credit for your senior year math. Now remember for English and math, you do need the 3.0 GPA. And for the math, you need a grade of C or better in algebra two. So we would just ask that you send your transcript to us and then you'd be eligible for those classes. If you take science 151, this is an environmental science class, that's gonna give you a science credit. So you wouldn't have to take the science at the high school, you could take the science with us and that means it's one less science class you have to take when you come to Chesapeake or when you go to a university and you're meeting that science requirement. Art 101 equals a fine arts. A lot of times um, students have already taken fine arts. You take that majority of times. The, the majority of times freshman year you take that. But if you haven't met your fine arts requirement, you could take Art 101 and that would satisfy that. History 132 is the world history class. My son's gonna do that at Queen Anne's also, is take that history class, because you're gonna need a history class in college. So get it out of the way now. And then that's also checking the box for world history. We have two great computer classes, the um, CST 143 and then the ethics in computer. And that is for, if you're in the computer pathway at the high school, that one of those could be your capstone course. Many students end up taking both of them. So they would take it's either two or three at the high school and then take those two with us. And then that would be the completer for your pathway. So lots of different options. And if this, like I said, we're sending you this presentation, but if you have any questions at all, please reach out to Tammy and myself and let us know when we're emailing with you and then we can um, go over all those options. Now, what we are hoping for the fall is that everything will be back to normal and we can have classes at each of your high schools. That's what normally happens. First period, you're just walking down the hallway, taking a college class and then going about your day with the rest of your high school schedule. It's great for the juniors, you know, my sophomores now that aren't able to drive yet. Then you can just take the class right at the high school. So we haven't, the fall schedule isn't available yet. It should be available in the next two weeks so we can see exactly what the schools are figuring out. It may change also, like we have to make sure your school is gonna be open and available to having faculty come in. So, you know, right now this is the plan and what we're shooting for and we hope it's gonna happen. Worst case is that you could come to the college and take some classes or it will be online again, like we are, um, we're doing in the spring. But what we're gonna offer, hopefully at each of the high schools at North Carolina, we're gonna have an English 101 on Tuesday and Thursday mornings. And then we're gonna have, it's a PED, it's called a wellness for life class. This is a great first class to take. It's like a health and wellness, Monday and Wednesday's first period. We're also having a sociology class online. You have to have each of these classes for a bachelor's degree. You need them no matter what. So you can choose, depending on your schedule, you'll work with your counselors to see if you can take one class with us and three classes at the high school, or you could do two classes with us and two classes at the high school. Now for my seniors, you may have a lot of flexibility and you may decide to take your English 102 with us to get credit for senior year English. You may decide to take college algebra to get credit for senior year math and also two other classes, and you wouldn't be taking any classes at the high school. So that is an option for you. Now at Colonel, we are gonna be offering a Humanities 110 course, Monday and Wednesday mornings, first period. Humanities, it's kind of an art, music, theater, appreciation course. It's really interesting and you learn a little bit about each of those, but you're not gonna be painting or drawing or performing music. You're just, it's a, more of a, history course, uh, but it counts as a humanities at your university that you're gonna attend. And at CCTC, we're gonna have welding, Monday and Wednesday afternoons, 110 to 240. And then we're gonna have that CST, the computer ethics course online for those students that are in the um, computer pathway right now. So that is ideally what the schedule is going to be for the fall. Like I said, once it's posted online and we see exactly what's happening, then we're gonna know more. But no, I mean, if anything that we've learned with COVID is that things can change 
and we have to be flexible and patient. And it's kind of hard to learn those two things, but that's what we're focused on right now. So that's what we're shooting for. And we'll know more once classes start in August. All right, so how do I get started? So I'm hoping you're all brand new. And if you've never taken a class with us at Chesapeake, you're gonna to wanna to apply to the college. So this is on our website, it's chesapeake.edu. And in the top right corner, it'll say apply today. You do need your social security number. So make sure you have that handy. You should probably start memorizing it anyway, cause you're gonna need that in the next few years. But only new students need to apply. You only have to do it one time. Then you're gonna meet with your counselor to find out do, when, how many classes you can take at Chesapeake, what time of day you can take those classes. And like I said, I know at Queen Anne's, my son was you know, tentatively choosing his classes for junior year. He had to do that last week. So even if you've already had to submit your plan, it doesn't mean that it can't be changed. So if it's something that you wanna add and you forgot to add it to your schedule, I'm sure your counselor, counselors will be able to make that adjustment for you. You're gonna complete the two forms that we're gonna to send to you, the certification form and the grant form. Now with the certification form, you just do the first section and the third section. We take care of the second one for you and you'll see that when we um, send that out to you. The grant form, you wanna fill out everything. Make sure you put the income, how many people in your family. If any parts are left blank, we're not gonna be able to process it. So you wanna fill out everything on that form. And then you're gonna to wanna to email Tammy and myself starting April 21st. That's the first day that you can register for fall classes. And we recommend doing it within that first week or two because classes do fill up. Now you really do have until, you know, three days before classes start in August that you could register for classes. But the likelihood of you getting the class that you want is pretty slim because it gets pretty busy around here. So if you could do it as soon as um, around that April 21st time period is when you're gonna email Tammy and myself, and then we will help you through that process. All right, hopefully this is all making sense. And unfortunately, after I stop the um, pre presentation, then I'll be able to see the chat so you can ask more questions too. Now the two forms that I had talked about, there is a process that you upload those forms and you're gonna click on the link on the screen and upload them. Now it can be a little tricky because after you upload them, it's not like a big message comes up and says, great job, you did it. Literally all that happens is that little highlighted part on that screen, that's the only way to let you know that it was successful. So if you've uploaded it, but you're like, I don't know if I did it or not, just email Tammy and myself and we can help you through the process. Now there's a way that you can search for courses. And I'm gonna go over this briefly because what's gonna happen when I, when we meet with you either through Zoom or through email, we'll be able to go over this in more detail with you. But on our website in the top right-hand corner, it says search for courses. And you're gonna to wanna to go where it says, please select term and you're gonna click fall 2021. Now, if you know which classes you wanna take, so if you wanna know you wanna take English, you could type, you could pull down the drop down menu where it's highlighted for subject and English will pop up. If you know it's English 101, you can put 101 in the course number. But if you're not sure, you can just leave that blank and then you hit submit. And once you hit submit, it will give you our list of classes. So this is for example, last fall, all of our, no, this isn't even all of them, our different communications classes. So this screen can be a little overwhelming and this is what Tammy and I will help you decipher because there's lots of things to look at. The most important thing, status over here where it's highlighted, you wanna make sure you pick a class that says open. That means that there are seats in the class. The section name and title, this COM 101, 671, COM 101, 701, that's the information you send to Tammy and myself so we know exactly which section you wanna take. It kind of tells you the difference of, there's different instructors you can choose from. And then also on the right-hand corner, it'll say, there are some classes that are dedicated just to high school students. And it will also tell you those classes that I showed you on the previous screens about which ones are located at each high school. It will show you that information too, where it'll say, this is only for Caroline County students. And instead of, in this information, instead of it saying online, 
it would actually tell you that it's gonna be at North Carolina High School. Like I said, we wanna briefly go over this just so you know there's a way to look at classes, but if you're not sure what to do, when you email us, we can walk you through it. Now, we're hoping that once you register with us, you pay for the class by, on, by July 12th, and then if you need to change your schedule between that point and when classes start in August, let your counselor know because they have to make sure that you have enough classes at the high school. So if you need to make any changes, you've got it first talk to your counselor and then contact Tammy and myself because we can help you with that process. Now, if you wanna make changes after the college class starts, there will be fees. There's always either a $5 drop fee or a $15 change fee. So it's ideally you're making the changes before classes start, but if you have to, um, make any changes, just let your counselor know and then let Tammy and myself know and we can help you go through that process. Hey, Angela. Yes. Hey, it's Brad. J just real quick, you guys, when you, uh, when you want to sign up for a class, it's always really good to involve your counselor because we have so many little weird things that, you know, might be specific to your major or specific to the class that you want to take, like, and, uh, you know, it just makes it go smoother if we're all together doing it, uh, you know, when, when you register, because what stinks is you get a class and then it doesn't fit with your high school schedule or, or it's not the right section or whatever, so if we can all keep each other in the loop the whole way, um, and if you, you know, if you contact your counselor at Colonel or North High, and, and they say, you know, you want me to help out too, that's fine, uh, we'll make it work. Absolutely, yeah, we all have to be on the same page. That's why that certification form, you'll see the student has to sign it, your parents have to sign it, and then we also, that section two is where we get approval from your counselors. We have to make sure everyone's on the same page that it is a college class, but we do. We wanna, you know, counsel you in the right direction and make sure you're taking the classes that you need. Now, it's important to remember our classes are going to start August 23rd. That's the start date. And I don't even, I know Queen Anne's, we haven't approved our final schedule for next year. So I don't even know if we're starting before Labor Day or after Labor Day. I'm not sure if you made the decision in Caroline County or not, but you may be starting your college class before high school. So you want to make sure August 23rd, that's going to be your first day of class. If it is at the high school, then your teachers are there at the high school waiting for you and you go in during that first period and then you just go home and you would wait to start your high school classes in another week or two. So since we start early, our classes are a little shorter than what you're used to at the high school. So our classes will end, they're gonna start August 23rd and they will end the beginning of December. So that means from the beginning of December until the middle of January, when your fall semester ends or your first two semester, your first semester, when that ends at the high school, you're going to have basically a month where you're not taking, you're only going to take the high school classes. You won't have any college classes to take. So that makes it nice where you have that break in December and beginning of January where you're not taking a college class. Another thing to keep in mind is our classes are only two days a week. I mentioned one of the classes Monday, Wednesdays, and another class is Tuesday, Thursday. We don't have any classes on Friday. So ideally, if we're back at the high schools and we have that first period class and you're taking a Monday, Wednesday class, then Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, you won't have a first period. And we recommend getting up and studying and getting a head start on your classes. But technically, you would not have to be at the high school until after that first period ends. Now, if you're not driving, um, then students do take the bus in and then your counselors, they would let you know where you would have to be during those other days. But if you're driving, you have a lot more flexibility and you only have classes those two days. So hopefully that makes sense.